When we want to find the Fourier series of a function f of x, we are basically writing f of x as a linear combination of functions phi n of x and psi n of x, where phi n of x equals sine n pi x, uh, and psi uh, uh, n of x equals uh, cosine pi n of x. So in linear algebra terms, the phi n and psi n are our basis vectors, and the coefficients a n and b n are our coordinates with respect to this basis. What really is going to help us here is that the phi n and psi n are not just any basis, but in fact an orthogonal basis. As you may remember from linear algebra, an orthogonal basis really helps in finding coordinates. So why is this basis orthogonal and what do we exactly mean with that? That is what you will learn in this video. So for functions v, define the following inner product. If your function is u and v, then the inner product then multiply u and v and integrate from alpha to beta. And we call functions orthogonal if this inner product equals zero. Now we are going to look at our functions phi m and phi n. So n and m are integers, we are equal than 1. Uh, x is between minus l and l. And then we define the inner product as follows. The product phi m comma phi n. Now we integrate from minus l to l. So alpha equals minus l and beta equals l. Sine times sine. How are we going to integrate here? Because this is not an elementary function. Fortunately, we have a nice goniometric tr uh, trick. Sine a times sine b equals cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b. So we can rewrite the integrand. So if you want to check this, you can use the other formula like cosine a minus b equals cosine a times cosine minus b minus uh, sine a sine minus b. So it gives cos cos minus sine sine. The other one gives a minus cos cos plus sine sine. So together it gives a sine sine. So that's uh, how you can check this uh, trigonometric formula. And now we can use this to uh, integrate this horrible function over here. Because sine times sine equals one half cosine of the difference minus cosine of the sum of the arguments. So that means that you get a difference, an m minus n over here and an m plus n over there. And now the, in, uh, now the inner product here is just an integral over two cosines. And we can uh, compute their antiderivatives. First we do m not equal to n. If m is equal to n, we have to be a bit careful here because then we have zero over there. But if m is not equal to n, we can just compute both antiderivatives. We get a sign with some rubbish between minus l and l, and another sign with some rubbish between minus l and l. And if you put in the upper boundary, you get sign m minus n times pi times l over l. So sign of a multiple of pi, which is zero. Same for the lower boundary. We get a zero as well there, so we get a zero minus zero. And the other term, we get sine of m plus n times pi. So again, the sine of a multiple of pi equals zero minus lower boundary sine of minus m plus n times pi. Again, a multiple of pi, so also zero. So all terms are zero. So for m is not equal to n, this inner product equals zero. Then for n equals n, uh, we just plug in m equals n over here and over here. So we get a 1 and a, a cosine. We compute the antiderivative. Uh, antiderivative of 1 equals x. It's a 1 half here and x over 2 between l and minus l. That's going to give us a factor of l. And the cosine becomes a sine between l and minus l. So we get the sine of 2m pi equals 0. Uh, and the sine of minus 2m pi equals 0 as well. So we get an l over there. So that means that we can summarize this as phi m comma n, the inner product of phi m with phi n equals delta m n. So 0 if m equals m is not equal to n. And the delta m n equals 1 if m equals n. And then we have the additional factor of l to get a correct constant. So that is how we can summarize the inner product between phi m and phi n. Moving on to the psi's. Fortunately, that goes very similarly because we have psi n equals the 
cosine now of n pi x over l. So we get an integral of cosine times cosine. But cosine a cosine b, it's the same formula, but then with a plus over here instead of a minus sign. So that means that our integral for m is not equal to n, gives us a 0 minus 0 my plus 0 minus 0, so again 0. And the, the, the integral with the m equals n will give us an l now plus 0 minus 0, so again l. So we get exactly the same. So psi m comma psi n equals again l times delta mn. So that's nice. So these are also orthogonal. Now what happens if you're going to uh, mix them up? So we have a sine and a cosine. Now if we now take the product, uh, we get a product of a sine and a cosine. A product of an odd and an even function gives us an f of x odd. However, if you integrate an odd function from minus l to l, you will always get zero, no matter which l you are taking. So we know that this integral is always zero, so phi m comma psi n is always equal to zero. So if you mix them, no problem, the inner product is zero. So if we uh, summarize, what do we find then? Uh, if we call our sines the phi m and the cosines the psi of n, we know that the phi m's form an orthogonal basis, we know that psi n's form from, uh, are also orthogonal, and if you mix them, their mutual inner product equals zero, and that is what we are going to use heavily when we are, are going to compute Fourier series.